As the COVID pandemic looms over our heads, it's tough to focus on the light at the end of the tunnel. But what if I told you that almost exactly a hundred years ago, the world was hit by something ridiculously similar? If you think this is the first time we've seen an unknown virus attacking our lungs, think again and think hard. In 1918, we saw one of the world's deadliest pandemics, the Spanish flu epidemic. It lasted for two years, over three waves. It affected 500 million and killed anywhere from 20 to 100 million people worldwide. To put that in context, those numbers today would have been 2.6 billion people being affected and over 500 million deaths. So if the numbers of casualties are this crazy, why haven't we heard more about the Spanish flu or the influenza? It's complicated. Firstly, there was a massive underreporting of cases in many countries. Why? Because it was the time of the First World War. And depicting yourself as a nation that was badly affected by the virus would portray a vulnerable image. Spain did not have to fudge up their reporting uh, because they didn't fight in the in the Great War and it was projected that the epidemic emerged from there labeling it the Spanish flu even though it really wasn't and Apart from the press the artists also spent a lot of time talking about the war and not uh, the epidemic And I'm guessing that it's just not as much fun to draw sick people as opposed to awesome war scenes uh, which is interesting because the war killed 20 million people while, while the flu death count could have been up to 100 million. Anyway, I did some digging up and found some artists that were affected by the Spanish flu. And while some of them could not make it, some survived to tell the tale. Let's get into it. Egon Schiel was an Austrian painter. He and his mentor Gustav Klimt were known far and wide. They had intense styles, they were raw, provocative and often caused scandal. On Feb the 7th, 1918, Egon Schiel heard the news about the passing of his mentor. Apparently, Gustav had suffered a stroke as a, as a result of the flu the previous day and Egon just had to visit his mentor one last time. But this time, it was in the morgue of the Vienna General Hospital and that visit resulted in this haunting sketch. It was called Gustav Klimt on his deathbed. And I know that's a little on the nose, but at least he called a spade a spade. Now, if you observe, you see the lifeless head of a deceased Klimt, complete with a face deformed because of the stroke. I tried really hard to understand why he drew his mentor dead. Isn't that grim? My best guess is, Egon Schiel wanted to pay a twisted little tribute to his mentor one last time. That same year, Schiel began working on another portrait called The Family. And this was meant to be a portrait of himself, his wife, although the model is rumored to have been his former mistress and his unborn child. Now, from a technical point of view, this is arranged in a pyramidal composition that usually helps instilling stability and a sense of balance to any work of art it's applied to. The portrait is calm, but certainly not happy. The naked family squatting in the image looks really vulnerable. The father is merging in with the darkness in the back. His sunken eyes gaze at the viewer and the mother looks on seeming helpless. The child too looks really clueless and rightfully so as it would have been a six month old fetus at the time. The paintings remained unfinished. You can notice the left man's hand. Egon's wife Edith died of the Spanish flu in October 1918, six months into her pregnancy. The child did not survive either and Sheil himself succumbed to the same disease three days later. And what we have as a result is this haunting image. Edvard Munch is most well known for his work, The Scream. Popularity-wise, it ranks up there with the Mona Lisas and the Starry Nights of the World. In 1919, Munch fell prey to influenza 
and after he recovered from the flu he was inspired to depict his experiences and that gave birth to two self portraits the first of his paintings is the self portrait with the spanish flu you can see him wrapped up in a blanket he's slumped over a chair he looks so pale that there is literally no difference in the color of his face the walls and the furniture his eyes look dull and we know where we've seen that mouth open up like this before anyway his next work titled self portrait after the spanish flu is a much happier side monk could be in his early stages of recovery as he still looks tired but at least he's used some colors on his face uh the room looks lively monk's got the suit and tie on and if you look at the background you spot his study desk and chair meaning he is back to work happy days around the same time in england was the artist john singer sargent he had been commissioned to document the war while painting his sketches sargent got influenza he was looked after in a hospital tent in france with soldiers suffering from battle injuries influenza or both Sargent created this painting depict, depicting the interior of a hospital tent. In the painting, the blankets are either red or brown. The different colors indicate the patient was red if contagious or brown if he wasn't. In the fourth court, we see a sergeant himself surrounded by wounded soldiers. It's interesting to see that this is the only painting that gives us a glimpse of the World War troubles clashing with those of the Spanish flu. The last one is a bit of a tricky one. Artist George Gross lived in Germany and by the time he was done with this painting, the country was ravaged by war, sickness and economic disaster. This painting is dedicated to Oscar Penitza, a playwright who was critical of the military, state and religious authorities. The funeral, just like Oscar Penitza's work, is highly doubtful of its country's authorities. At first glance, the painting looks really hellish. The buildings loom over the streets and the people are out for a procession. The scene seems to be a funeral complete with a pastor, a coffin and a skeleton. It's really claustrophobic and it's extremely charged. Explaining the reason for creating his work, Gross had to say the following. In a strange street by night, a hellish procession of dehumanized figure mills, their faces reflecting alcohol, syphilis, plague. I painted this protest against a humanity that had gone insane. It is said that it was really common to see Europeans dancing on the street to celebrate the end of the war, while people in the neighboring streets mourned the loss of loved ones. The funeral isn't exactly a direct reference to the influenza itself. but an end of humanity as gross would know it over 100 years have passed since the spanish flu and strangely enough everything still feels so relatable the last few years have been an uphill battle for all of us and i hope in knowing that we've done it all before i'm able to convince you that we'll get through this one too i hope you like this video if you have any suggestions for what i should do next Drop them below. Until next time, cheers.